Hello folks. In this video I'm going to review the Laser Pecker 3, which is a handheld metal and plastic engraver that uses a 1064 nanometer optical infrared laser. Laser Pecker sent me the LP3 suite package which includes their roller rotary along with the engraver. Both were packaged in individual boxes sealed in plastic and protected with foam. In the engraver box we have the instruction manual, the laser module, the support track, fixtures and screws for assembly, safety glasses, a few metal business card blanks, a couple of USB cables and the power adapter, a ruler for setting the focal point, and the base. The support track is motorized to make focal point adjustments easier, which is controlled by the up and down switches on the top of the track. The bracket supports the laser module, but also allows it to spin vertically 360 degrees and lock it using the thumb screw on the side to allow engraving in any position. The assembly is pretty quick with the support track being attached to the base with just a couple of screws and the module is attached to the bracket on the support track using the thumb screw. Once that's done, a USB to USB-C power cable can be connected between the module and the track, and the power adapter can be connected to the module and the module can be turned on. These fixtures can be used for accurate positioning when batch engraving, but I'm going to leave them off for now. To set the focal point, the module is raised or lowered so that there's a 13 cm space between the module and the workpiece. This can be done using the provided ruler or by pressing the preview button on the top of the module and raising or lowering the module until the two dots that are displayed on the workpiece are joined at a single point. LaserPecker developed an easy-to-use software for mobile devices and PC to pair with their engraver, which can be downloaded from their website. After I downloaded, installed, and opened the app on my phone, I connected the Bluetooth and chose a logo for my phone to engrave. The app provides a lot of creating and editing features, but for now I'm going to leave the logo as it is and move on to the file setting page. Here I can choose the resolution and physical size that I want the logo to be, as well as preview the border of the work area on the workpiece so that it can be positioned accurately. Once I was happy with the positioning, I exited preview mode and moved on to the next page where I can choose the type of material that I'm engraving, which will generate default settings for that material, or I can customize the power and depth settings and choose the number of passes to get the look that I want. When everything was set, I put on my safety glasses and pressed the start button to start the engraving. The speed that it engraves will depend on the resolution and power and depth settings. Using a higher value of any of these will produce a slower speed. This took around 2-3 to three minutes using the settings that I showed earlier, and it looks like it did a pretty good job. The color is consistent and the edges are clean and sharp. I like this machine already. Since this is a metal and plastic engraver, I'm going to test a few different types of each to see what it can do. Next I engraved a picture of one of my dogs onto a painted aluminum sheet. 
As I mentioned earlier, the app provides a lot of editing features so you can adjust your photos to get the look that you want. From grayscale to pencil sketch, adjusting brightness and contrast, invert and using dithering, or you can add text, crop, rotate, etc. Because I chose to engrave this photo in 4K resolution, it took around 45 minutes to finish, but it turned out really nice. I think I could have captured a lot more detail if I chose to use grayscale, but it would have taken a lot longer to finish. Next, I engraved another picture of my dog onto a bare aluminum sheet. This one is interesting. At first it looked like it didn't work very well, but when I turn the piece into the light, she appears. Next I engraved a logo onto a piece of 110 copper flat bar, and it worked just fine. Then I tried an aluminum alloy guard from an old BMS. It turned out a lot like the aluminum sheet from earlier. and then I tested a piece of nickel-plated copper sheet from an old battery, and it turned out fine as well. Satisfied that I can engrave just about any metal, I moved on to branding a couple of hand saws, an anodized aluminum drywall square, and a couple of wrenches. I really like how the wrenches turned out. Next, I wanted to try engraving plastic. This is the USB power adapter for my DJI drone. Usually bright or clear plastics are problematic for small laser engravers, but not this one. After confirming that it can engrave bright plastic, I then engraved my logo on the drone itself. To test engraving at an angle, I engraved logos onto the painted aluminum air intake ports for the homemade electric buggy that I made last year. This is a really convenient feature, but the angle of your workpiece needs to match perfectly with the angle of the module, otherwise the focal point will be off from one side to the other, and the engraving depth and color won't be consistent. The bracket that the module pivots on has a series of notches to position the module at, but they may fall a few degrees higher or lower than your workpiece. I adjusted the module angle close to what it should be, and then used shims where needed to prop up the end of the ports to match the module. Of course, being a portable handheld engraver, I could have just held it in place on the buggy and engraved it that way, but the logo took around 20 minutes, so that's about 18 minutes too long for me to stand around holding something. But I did move the engraver over to my tube bender and engraved my logo into it as well. I then went around the shop branding all of my tools, like this miter saw, so there's no confusion on the job site as to whose truck they belong in at the end of the day. Next I wanted to test the rotary. It has a channel in the bottom that fits over the engraver's base to make positioning really simple, and it connects to the module with another USB to USB-C cable. The rotary needs to be enabled in the app settings as shown, but once that's done and the focal point is set, then it's ready to use.
The rotary also comes with a bag of various sized rubber rings that can be slipped over smooth objects like this chrome alley tube to provide better grip and prevent slipping. I did see some evidence of that during the first attempt, so I used the rubber rings and it hasn't happened since. Of course I couldn't resist engraving the rotary itself. Here's a quick look at what I did with this machine so far. I think this little engraver is going to be handy to have in the workshop and around home. As you've probably guessed, this would be a great tool for a jeweler or a small business that wants to make their own promotional merch or to create barcodes and QR codes and spec labels on large products or packaging that won't fit in a typical commercial engraver. I'm sure that even a hobbyist could make good use of it. But that's it for now, folks. If you made it this far, I thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in seeing future videos, then be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next one. Take care, folks.